Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are going to go over how to use a Salesforce flow to count iterations in a loop. And so I'm here in Salesforce and we'll just get started. I'm gonna to navigate to the flow builder and the type of flow that I'm gonna to use to demonstrate this concept will just be a screen flow. You can use it with other flow types. So you don't have to do a screen flow in order to get this to work. I think it just really makes the point uh, nicely. So I'm going to select a new flow here, and we're going to make it a screen flow. And I always like to use the freeform layout. I've been around the flow builder uh, since it was the cloud flow designer, so I'm, that's my habit. But I think the auto layout has a lot to offer too, so feel free to use that. Step one is going to be to add a screen to the canvas. and I always remove the header at the top. I also tend to remove the pause button unless I know for a fact that I want people to come back and use this. So we'll just start kind of with an empty screen like this. We can label it screen one, and I think that's good. For display text, we can put in uh, display text one. And so I dragged a display text component to the layout. I named it display text one, and now I can enter the text here. So I'll say uh, the current count is, and we're gonna leave that blank. Let's see if I can make a new resource here. So I can, okay. So we're gonna create a variable now, and this is going to be a resource um, variable, and the data type is going to be a number. And we'll call this loop count. And we're going to set uh, decimal places to zero, and then we'll set the default value to zero and press done. And so here, loop count will be evaluated and displayed by the flow. So I'm going to press done. And I'm going to connect our start element to our screen. And now, what we're going to drag a loop to the canvas. And in order to get a loop to work, uh, we obviously need a collection variable. And so I skipped ahead a step, but let's go get a collection of some sort. Perhaps I could get um, opportunities. So let's say get opportunities. And the object will be, let's see, uh, obviously the opportunity object. And here we can uh, define what types of opportunities we want to to get, so perhaps I could grab the account ID and just say that the account ID is equal to, we'll make a new variable, we can call it the account ID variable, and we could pass this into the flow, maybe make it available for input, press done, and we will get all of the records, press done. And I'm going to reorder this so that the uh, flow kicks off with the get records and then goes to the screen. So now that uh, the flow is kind of, it starts off, it gets a bunch of opportunities that are related to a particular account, and then it goes to screen one. Now we can go through our loop, and we could say, uh, we're gonna loop through this collection, first item to last, so loop, loop through the collection, we'll press done. I'll connect our screen to our loop. And so what we can do now is actually we can put another screen inside the loop. And before we do that, I will drag an assignment over and I can just add uh, one to the current loop count. So I'll select the loop count variable. I'll say add one. We'll call this increment count. Press done, drag that over. I'll do that for each item in the collection. And then I'll drag another screen element here. And again, we'll hide the header. And we can remove the pause button. And again, I will just drag a, another display text here. We'll call this uh, display text two as the API name. And we can put in, um, you know, the current count is now, and we can enter our loop count variable here and we can say the opportunity name is and then we can reference the current item from our loop 
and pick the opportunity name. Name. Press done. Oh, what did I miss? I think I have to name this. So I'll call this loop loop screen. Press done. We'll connect our uh, inc our assignment increment count um, to our screen, and then put that back to the loop. And in this way, we can kind of count the number of iterations that are in a loop. So I'm going to save this, and we'll just do a, a debug. So I'll call it a screen count iterations. Press save. And now we can just debug it. We don't actually need to uh, activate it or anything. I do know that because we have our get records here that's referencing an account ID variable that we will need an account ID. So I'll just grab United Oil Gas Corp. I will pull this ID out of the URL, copy it to my clipboard, and then back in the flow, I can press debug. And this will give us a debug screen and we'll be prompted to enter our account ID here, which we will do, and then we can press run. And so uh, we see that the flow starts, it looks up all the opportunities that are related to this account ID, and the current count, our variable, is set to zero. When we press next, we will start looping. And so it's just going to uh, increment the count by one. It'll show us the, the name of the current opportunity. So we'll press next. We can say the current count is now one. And it's gonna show us the name of the opportunity, the first one in the loop that is related to that United Oil and Gas Corp account. Let's open this up. So United Oil and Gas has, looks like 10 accounts, or excuse me, 10 opportunities here. And so the screen is currently showing the first one, which looks like it's right here. So theoretically, we should be able to loop through this 10 times and increment the count by one each time. So if we press next, we see the count goes to two, and the new opportunity is United Oil Refinery and Generators, which is this one. So we can press next and go on to the, the next opportunity. The current count is now three. And so you can see that every time the flow loops through, we are incrementing our count of the number of iterations in the loop. So we can press next, next, next. I mean, we could go all the way through up to 10. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, now, if you wanted to have special functionality, let's say when you hit the current count of seven, you wanted to show a separate screen, you could build that in here. So I could drag a decision element here and we could call it um, evaluate count. Oops, I spelled count wrong. Evaluate the count. And this could be, um, is the count seven? Could be our first outcome. And we can actually reference the variable, the loop count variable. So when the loop count variable equals seven, we can you know, have the decision element divert and do something different. So what we'll do then is we will disconnect our assignment from the original loop screen. Kind of move this up here. I'm gonna move the assignment into the decision and then I can drag a separate screen element to the canvas. We can call it screen three I'll hide the header. I can also hide the pause button. Just do that out of habit. I will drag a display text here to the screen. We can call this display text three, following our pattern. And again, you know, put it in bold. I'll say the current count is now. And here, you know, we can just reference that loop count variable again. Oops, it doesn't seem like that went in right away. Here, click loop count. There it is. And so let's say, congratulations, the loop count is now lucky number seven. May you have an extremely lucky day. Smiley face, I don't know, something random. <laughs> um, here, I'll put a, there we go. Great, done, okay. And so now when this decision evaluates and if the count is seven, we will go to this screen here, this new lucky screen. Otherwise, we'll just go back to our loop. Um, oops, no, just kidding. So the default outcome will be the normal screen. If the count is seven, 
we will show them the lucky screen. And of course, after the lucky screen, we still need to go back to the start of our loop. So maybe something that looks like this. And already here, this is where the auto layout tends to shine. So let's close the uh, debug that we had open. I'm gonna pull the account ID up again, and I'll just debug this again. And what I'm gonna show here is that, you know, when we put the account ID in, it's gonna run, the count will start at zero. We see that, we see that evaluate over here on the side. When I press next, it's going to start looping through opportunities just as we did before and we see that our assignment is again incrementing our loop count by one and now we can use that loop count at um, a specific point inside the flow to make a decision in the middle of a loop so when this hits seven or when the loop count hits seven instead of seeing this screen we'll see a different screen which should be the lucky screen so it says yay the current count is now seven congratulations it's now the lucky number seven. May you please have an extremely lucky day. So, you know, obviously you probably would never show this to your users, but the point is that we can iterate or we can count the number of loop iterations. And then when we hit a certain uh, count in the loop, we can take another action. So here we're doing that with screens. Instead, you could update records, you could uh, create records, you could delete records, and using a decision and an assignment in a loop makes that all possible. And that's essentially it. So a quick recap of what we learned. We built a screen flow and we uh, grabbed all of the opportunities that are related to a specific account in Salesforce. For each of those opportunities, we looped through them and we used a new variable called loop count to keep track of the current count or the number of iterations that we are in inside our loop. We incremented it by one with an assignment element and then we use the decision element to show one of two possible screens given what the current count is. So for most of the items, uh, we showed this first screen where we just told them the opportunity name and the count. And for the lucky number seven, we showed them a screen um, telling them congratulations. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what other flow videos you'd like to see and make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce Flows, make sure to check out my course on Udemy. There's a link in the description. It has over eight hours of in-depth Salesforce Flow tutorials designed to turn you into a Flow Ninja. With that said, have a great day.